So zooplankton is a very common trout food source in the interior lakes of British Columbia and throughout Western Canada and Western North America. So zooplankton are submicroscopic. We can see them with the naked eye. Uh, common species include Daphnia, Cyclops, Bosmina. They're, they're members of the crustacean family. So they live in these lakes and the more productive the lake is, the more abundant the zooplankton blooms occur. So what often happens is these zooplankters like Daphnia form clusters and they're little round balls in the water and uh, they form little balls of dense, ma dense clusters of Daphnia. And so the trout just open their mouths and breathe and uh, they filter the Daphnia through the gills. And so we can imitate uh, the Daphnia uh, or the Cyclops uh, by using what we call blobs. And uh, so there's, the blobs are usually the, the color of the uh, Daphnia, which are anywhere from a light olive green to a bright orange to a red, almost to a maroon, depending on what their diet is. So there's a lot of materials that we use uh, to tie these blobs, and they're mostly called, they're mostly chenilles, plastic chenilles. So this is a FNF uh, micro jelly fritz. So that's a good one, good material. And then uh, the original uh, UV uh, micro uh, biscuit color, it's uh, Fritz. That's a good color. It's a very common color for them. And then, um, you know, this is called Agusti. The color is sockeye, so it's an orangey color. Uh, and then I like to use, uh, uh, add a little bit of attractant and I like to use this uh, creeper FNF creeper and the color is called prawn So it's it's an orangey pink color, which is very uh, common for Daphnia, but it's got rubber legs on it So I'm just going to demonstrate a, a pattern that uh, that I use this material uh, for uh, for a blob so again really simple patterns this is a number uh, actually a number eight scud hook in a Daiichi 1120. That's a 764 uh, chartreuse green brass bead. And then I'm just using some uh, fluorescent pink uh, UTC 140 uh, tying thread. I can use fairly thick stuff because it, this, you want the fly to be very durable. So I'm just gonna lay a, a, uh, a thread base. Then I'm gonna take my creeper material so it's kind of cool it's got these little rubber things coming out so again very simple pattern you know we're, we're fishing these things static so under an indicator works extremely well you can also catch and retrieve them on sinking lines but as we did today on this lake and other lakes uh, they work very well um, fished under an indicator so for instance you might be in 15 feet of water, so you, you need to suspend them down 10 feet. You don't have to be right on the bottom because the uh, Daphnia will be uh, mid-water often. So I'm just winding the... I mean, you're, you're probably going, what the heck? This, this pattern will never catch a fish, but it's just catching the fishermen. But believe me, uh, blobs, and in particular this material, uh, can be very effective. Let me just take our whip finisher and that off, cut it, and then I'm just going to take a, a little Velcro hook just to pick out the, the chenille and the legs, get them flowing back. That's it. Tie that on with a non-slip loop knot. Um, 18 to 24 inches above your tippet, put a swivel on, like a 14 barrel swivel, and then the rest of your leader to your indicator and suspend this. For more tips like this, check us out online.